This uh, third section covers the infrastructure as code approach. As of today, NDFC offers both Terraform provider and Ansible collections, and uh, this section focuses on Ansible collection. Before we start, let's have a look at the um, Ansible collection in a nutshell. So these are the few components that you need to take care. The Ansible config that determines how your Ansible set behaves. The inventory that includes the different controllers with their credentials, as you may have multiple NDFC or DCNM controllers. The playbooks uh, where you specify the tasks. And uh, notice that you can run multiple tasks in the same playbook and uh, all the modules which are given in the Ansible collections. In short, you need to edit the inventory file with your controllers and your playbooks with your expected tasks. When done, you can push and get the configuration and the states of your target component, which can be an NDFC controller or DCNM, or an APIC controller, if you wish to program an ACI fabric, or an XOS device, or UCS server, or Nexus dashboard service, and, and much more. As you know, NDFC 12 is the evolution of DCNM 11. The good news is that if you have a mix of DCNM and NDFC controllers, you can use exactly the same collections for both with the same codes. You need the following release versions, and uh, as of today, the last NDFC collection version is 3.2.0. The Ansible collection for NDFC includes modules to automate command data operations for VXLAN VPN fabric, and you can use the same collection for either NDFC or DCNM. To keep it simple, you may have multiple custom playbooks available for different actions toward the fabric. For example, an interface module for managing the interfaces, an inventory module to add or remove switches from either DCNM or NDFC Manage VXN VPN fabric, a network module to add and remove the networks from a VXN VPN fabric, and so on. And you have an inventory file that contains your environment, which can contain multiple controllers. So one single file for all your DCNM and NDFC controllers. The playbooks are tightly coupled with the environment parameters. This is an example of your inventory with the NDFC reachability information, the credentials to access the service, and the few variables that you can tune if you need. And this is another example of one customized playbook where you specify here the NDFC controller, same name defined in the inventory file, and uh, the fabric name, the VRF name, and so on, right? And you can copy the sample code from the NDFC collection, from uh, the module of interest, and replace uh, the strings of interest with your value. Um, first of all, notice that uh, several lines of the code of the playbooks have been removed uh, just for cosmetic concerns. Now, secondly, uh, this is another playbook to create a series of network overlays uh, attached to a pair of switches. And the series of network creations relies on the loop items. Now, if you want, you can combine multiple tasks in the same uh, playbook. So it's up to you. Now let's take a real use case. So same uh, scenario as uh, with the previous sections. You are the network manager and you have been asked to deploy and attach dozens of overlay networks across several nodes and across several interfaces. And if you remember, you have covered a very similar scenario with uh, NDFC bulk attachment and detachment using the CSV files, which worked very well in module two. And with the previous section, you just showed the programming approach based on NDFC REST API and using a Postman to run different JSON scripts to deploy and attach dozens of overlay networks. In these sections, you want to deploy all these networks using a modern programming approach known as infrastructure as code, and especially using Ansible collection, which offers a series of uh, predefined modules covering most of uh, all day two operations. And you want to go faster, easier, 
and more reliably. Obviously, you need first to install the DCNM and DFC Ansible collections in your workstations. And for this video, you install NDFC Ansible collection version 2.0.1. Now, the first thing you need to do is to configure the environment with your target host, DCNM or NDFC, and uh, its reachability information with the inventory file. Then you configure the network playbooks. You can combine multiple tasks in the same playbook. And uh, finally, you run the Ansible playbook code that execute the VRF and network modules associated to your fabric inventory file comprising your DCNM and NDFC reachability information and credentials. Now let's have a look at the demo. Return to the multi-site domain with the 2 VXLAN VPN fabric and from the MSD scope open the detail view windows and look at the VRF tab. As you can see there is only one VRF tenant one deployed. Let's move to the network tab and notice the deployed networks for the firewalls in session as well as for the web and app networks deployed under the VRF tenant one. Now open your preferred script editor. You need first to create your inventory file used to define your controller targets with their respective uh, reachability information. In this example, you define one DCNM appliance and one NDFC service, as well as the credentials for each controller. You can use the example given in the Ansible library. And when done, you create your playbook. Same as with the target file, you can use the examples given in the Ansible library. In the playbook, you define the host target, in our case, the NDFC service. You can combine multiple tasks in the same playbook, for example, we have a task to create a new VRF name Ansible VRF Demo, the VRF ID and the VLAN ID, uh, if you wish. You can leave these parameters empty and uh, NDFC will automatically populate them from its uh, virtual network and VLAN identifier pools. Then you attach the VRF to the switch of interest. The second task is to create a series of networks. For highly repetitive network deployment and attachment, you can use the function of loop. Other options are also available, right? In this case, the variable's item will be replaced by the values listed under loop, such as the network name, the network ID, the VLAN ID, the default gateway. And there will be 20 iterations, so meaning 20 new networks under the same VRF. Then you can configure the attachment to the concerned switches, which are actually here, Leaf 3 and Leaf 4, in the Fabric 2, as well as interfaces. And you specify that you want to deploy. Return to the NDFC GUI and start the terminal to execute your Ansible playbook, the, the one just created. The first task the playbook check the reachability of the target controller. Then the second task is to create the new VRF. From the detailed view on NDFC, you can see the status pending in progress and deployed. Return to the terminal with the Ansible command. We can see now that the networks are created step by step with the item reference. When all the tasks are done, the status OK appears for the three tasks. And from the detailed view, you can run a refresh and you can see the 10 first networks, Ansible 50, 51, 52, etc., that have been created. You can look at the next page or you can increase the number of lines to 20, for example, to list uh, all new 20 networks. Now let's have a look at the attachments. As you can see, new networks Ansible have been attached to Leaf 3 and Leaf 4 from uh, Fabric 2 and attached to the three interfaces Ethernet E1-17, 18 and 19. To summarize the benefits of the infrastructure as code, it uh, drastically reduces the time spent on very repetitive tasks. It speeds up the implementation of new features, new products. And because you reuse qualified and verified codes, 
that reduces the risks when making changes in the infrastructure. Infrastructure as code is a generic term that provides managing and provisioning compute, storage, software, or data center networks through machine readable definition file, the code, rather than physical hardware configuration and interactive configuration tools such as the CLI or the GUI. The code in the definition files may use either scripts or declarative definitions rather than maintaining the code through a manual process. There are different options that come with uh, NDFC, such as you can operate your fabric with uh, the integrated Swagger to allow you to program your fabric using the NDFC REST APIs pre-packaged for you. You don't need any external API management tools. It's all embedded with your Nexus dashboard platform. But if you wish to use a third party to manage your fabric, such as Postman, then you can leverage the centralized RESTful API that NDFC offers to you. And finally, you saw the NDFC Ansible collection that provides multiple modules covering almost all daily operations needs. And for your information not covered here, NDFC also supports the Terraform provider.